week I've been talking about an array of topics, and I've been kind of doing some chronology in the politics of hip hop culture. But I was very fortunate this past summer before we started school to go, how many of you are familiar with Comic Con, the Comic Con? So I was down at the San Diego Comic Con, which is the largest of all the Comic Cons, and I pretty much go every year because I'm a huge comic fan and I'm also a fan of hip hop, so I went to, as you all know, so I went to a panel on hip hop and comics. For some reason, I had never, in my mind, really put the two together. But it made sense once I went to this panel and I was fascinated by what I was seeing. And our guest lecturer today was one of the panelists presenting information at the Hip Hop and Comics panel at Comic Con. So I'm going to let him explain more about what he does. But I would like you all to give a nice warm welcome, Mr. Turner Lange. Okay, so, um, like I said, I'm a comic artist and an illustrator and animator uh, and writer. And so basically what I do is I uh, put together this book called The Adventure of the Wally Fresh. And the book you guys are holding right now is like a little sample of the book itself. So. Um, I guess I'll tell you guys a little bit about the background of the book and the story and, and how it ties into kind of hip hop and all that kind of stuff. And then I have like a nice little uh, presentation for you guys to check out. There. Um, so just a brief history of the book. Uh, I started about four years ago. And um, I came out, I was living in New York and uh, this was right around the time of the recession, like the height of the recession. So the economy in New York just kind of bottomed out. And so I moved back to LA. And uh, while I was out here, I started working as a storyboard artist. And uh, in a bid to get work, the agents I was with asked me, they were like, do you have any samples that we can use to kind of like push you? Or do you have any kind of stuff that you, have, that, you can, that you can give us that we can sell you on? And so I went back through my old scripts. And I found this script called uh, The Adventures of Christian Metalhorn. And um, I needed to create some portfolio pieces, so I looked at it, I read it, and it kind of made me laugh. So I was like, oh, you know what, I'll do the first issue. And I redesigned all the characters, and I retitled it The Adventures of Wally Fresh. And so basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a comic book that kind of like highlights black culture, um, create a black superhero that doesn't have like black in its title. You know, like if you look around a lot of the superheroes, it's always like black lightning, and, Black Flash, this, 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 this. So I didn't like that kind of stuff. So I wanted to create a character that was like a black hero that didn't have black in his name, but was totally black. You know, that had like that had street cred, you know, that had black culture. I wanted to, I wanted to create a send up for black culture that I wasn't seeing in comics at the time. Um, and so I started with the first issue, and it went okay. I did a nice little launch for it. It got a nice little following. And then I went back to my agents and said, here, here's this book. And so they said, all right, this is good. What else do you got? And so I went back and I looked at the script again. And I said, you know what? I might as well just finish out the entire story. So I did the first storyline. And then I released that. And then it started to catch a little following. And then it felt so good. I was like, you know what? I'll do another book. And so I did another book um, with the same characters, uh, but this time a different adventure. And so the first book is called Cupid Zero. And the basic premise of it is a guy, the main character, Wally Fresh, is this guy who lives in New York. And has anybody been to New York here? Anybody get from the East Coast? Okay, you guys know like rent is ridiculously expensive in New York, right? So the premise is, is this guy, he can't afford to pay his rent. And so he takes on a new roommate, which is a spirit animal from the spirit world. Okay. And so together with his next door neighbor, who's this crazy Rockets character, Valerie, they get into just about any kind of trouble they can find. And so the first storyline, Cupid's Arrow, is about Wally going on a blind date with a girl he met on the internet. And she may or may not be a serial killer. Okay? And so his next door neighbor and the spirit animal, his roommate, uh, decide to take mushrooms and watch the secret in it. Okay, and then in this kind of like paranoid drug-induced state, 
they think that Wally might actually be on the date with a serial killer. <laughs> so they rush to his aid, and they ruin the date, and you know, all this kind of stuff happens. So it's in the book. I'll, you guys will see a little bit of it in the presentation. And so uh, basically for the second book, though, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go back and kind of see what was working, see what wasn't working. And then uh, I came up with this idea called, uh, it was called Take the A Train. And so, um, like, I'm a big, huge jazz fan. And so another kind of East Coast gag is that, like, if you're in New York and you're going to Brooklyn and you take the G train at night, it's like one of the slowest trains ever, OK? And so it's just basically, it's like, if you can avoid the G train at all costs, just don't, don't take it. If you, want, if you can, you should take the A train, right? So that's kind of like the premise behind the title. But it's also kind of a play on words, because it's like, do Gallington, take the A train, that whole kind of thing, right? Um, and so as I was doing this, I kind of felt like I was like, this felt good, but it wasn't like hitting the way I wanted it to, you know? Like, it was catching people, but it wasn't catching them fast enough. And so I kind of thought about it, and I thought about it, and I was like thinking about ways to help people interact with the idea. Um, and basically, what I tried to do is, without through this whole idea, is just make people interact with the world and get to know the characters and really kind of get engrossed in the story and the flavor. Um, and the flavor is, is it's like the formula is kind of like. It's like black culture, superhero, comics, and hip hop. And then I try to mix it all together in a way that'll make the audience laugh and make you kind of like enjoy these characters and really kind of get into it. So that at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, I know guys that are like that, or I know I have a neighbor that's just like Valerie, or I have a roommate that's just like Perry. Um, so that you kind of like, you get into it, you know? And so, um, so now basically what I'll do is uh, at one point, um, I was asked to join a art show. And so it was like this art show basically about uh, kind of rabble rousers in the cartoon world. And it was people that were doing kind of interesting things with cartoons and kind of making interesting statements and saying interesting stuff. And so what I wanted to do was, uh, as being a part of this group show, was create a new way to interact with the characters. And so what I came up with was I didn't have the production money to do like an animated short, which is what I really wanted to do. Um, but I figured the next best thing was to just give the audience a way to interact with Wally and all the rest of his friends in a new way that would be interesting. And so what I did was I have a cousin who does like hip hop beats and all kinds of stuff like that. And I got some actors to come in and record voices of the characters. And so what I'll play for you right now is the premise is Wally Fresh's voicemail, okay? <laughs> so this is like you're listening to his answering machine, okay? So. And very, please leave a message for E or I and we'll get back to you as soon as humanly possible. Yes, I know, I know, it was clever, it was clever, please, stop hitting me, stop hitting me and get down! No, it's not still recording. Hey, Wally, man, what's up? Uh, yo, I'm going up to the United Artists of the Union Station, I'm gonna go check that new flick out, you interested? I'll be back if you want me to copy the ticket. Hi, Wally, this is Shelly from Ken's Video. Just giving you a call to let you know that your Cynthia Red album just came in. So yeah, come and pick it up whenever you can. Um, we'll be excited to see you. Hey, Wally, what's up, man? There's a little on the Howdy screen in Prospect Park, 24 Row. Let me know. Thank you. 
We can only hold it for 24 hours. It's flying off the shelves. Give us a call or come by the store. Thank you. Bonjour, Wally. This is Cecile calling from Chérie, letting you know that your budget has been on for a Hey! Hey, you gotta shut the fuck up back there! You playing a game of pots and pans? Hey, Wally, uh, this is your landlord calling again. Um, looks as if you are, uh, haunting late to the rent. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Things happen. Get kidnapped by a woman. Y'all just got to look after me. This is a phone call from Victor at Radley's Island Correctional Facility. To accept these charges, press one. To deny, press two. Para información en español, opina tu ocho. Wait till I want to shout about this! Fuck you! Yo la subvención de vos de bien de la conciencia, merci monsieur. Uh, yes, this is, uh, Detective Kuczynski at the bedside precinct. I'm uh, calling with regard to uh, a restraining order that you have filed against the uh, Crystal Pennyworth. <laughs> hey, what's up, Wally? Listen, um, so my fleet delivery service got busted the other day. Um, would you happen to have another number or know somebody who uh, maybe get me some good weed? I you can come out and try to Yo, Wally, what's going on, man? Uh, phone's done, we're at Union Hall. The rest of here is walking along. Let me know. Hi, this is uh, Beth calling for Molly Fresh uh, in regards to the drink that you accidentally spilled on me the other night. I'm just calling so that I can uh, give you the dry cleaning bill. <laughs> Yo, Molly, you there? You got it. Please call us back within the next 12 days with a yes. Our number is 212-900-8299. Thank you so much. We look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. Yo, Wally, can you call back, I'm going to go ahead and pat you up. This is out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm about to take them off, so I'm coming back, I mean. Please call me back. Uh, I'm Hey, Wally, what's going on? This is Professor Stengu. Uh, just take a look at this device you brought over. It's fascinating. I haven't quite seen anything like this. But... The uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, we just want to let you know that you're a bad man again, and uh, we weren't able to come up on the turquoise blue. However, we do have a carry wheel, so... See if you want to refile in regards to the charges that she drove you, tied you to a, quote, desk machine, and, uh, forced you to answer pop culture trivia. Ooh. Well, thank you, see them all. You know what? I have a break between 12 and 1, so you can call me then. Um, if not, I'm going to be in the lab all day until probably, like, 9 o'clock, so maybe after 9. Fight you up, girl. Get your fucking head off.
calling in reference to a Bartholomew J. Beaver. Is that correct? I'm just, I'm just checking. I want to make sure that this is correct. If I'm going to leave a message, I'm making sure that this is correct. Hey, Wally, bro, what's up? This is fucking Johnny fucking Tango, bro. The Nassau all know it all. You know me. Whatever. Okay, so look, I got some shit to tell you. I'm fucking getting away from his fucking chick's house the other day. I banged it out. No big fucking deal. Barry left the following list and would like to see if these books are in stock. How to talk to your familiar. We don't have that. Uh, just stick it. An idiot's guide to killing vampires. We don't have that. Uh, quantum physics made easy. We do have that. Uh, the keys to space and time. An idiot's guide to interdimensional travel. Uh, we used to have that. And somebody actually checked it out. Uh, call us next week and we might be able to find it. Prospect Park, and I saw some crazy shit, bro. The craziest shit I've ever seen in my life, bro. Like a fucking, I'm walking through and I see some fucking eyes in the bushes, bro. It's a fucking troll or some shit. And he fucking is like, yo, you gotta pay a fucking toll. I was like, fuck you, bro. And I fucking ripped an ass off on a fucking Eastern Parkway, dude. Anyway, call me back, bro. Uh, this message is for Barry. Barry, I am calling you from the Amber Scholar. Uh, back to our tab again. We really, really need to work this out with you. Uh, I saw that you tried to pay last night. Um, I, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, we do not pay with the blues. Uh, goblins, trolls, elves, and dwarves, a guide to interspecies diplomacy. We, we don't have that. <laughs> Uh, Interstellar graffiti and other quantum art forms. Probably enough, we do have. I have to tell you, I haven't seen uh, a reading list like this in quite some time. It, it actually reminds me of uh, January 1972. I was sitting down in Prospect Park with uh, uh, one of uh, uh, Janis Joplin's cousins. You see, I used to, uh, I was actually a roadie uh, for uh, Jimi Hendrix and uh, 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 Janis back in the day, uh, but uh, you guys don't need to know anything about that. But uh, I have to tell you, this is uh, a wild reading list. Uh, uh, reminds me of my purple haze days, as they say. <laughs> Uh, but uh, please, Bartholomew, or Barry, whoever you are, if you could give us a call back, um, because we would like to uh, get these settled. Uh, please, once again, this is Murray from the Brooklyn Public Library. Hey, wow, that's so good, isn't it? Yeah, look at this. Which is that they call? You believe this? You can't believe this. Alvin Gunman. A guide to inter the interspecies diplomacy. You can't make this up. Oh my god. Hi, this message is for Wally Fresh. This is Shelly Bukowski calling from the Natural History Museum. Uh, we're calling in regards to an artifact that came in last week, and we would love your professional opinion about it. Uh, you came highly recommended by a Professor Sticker Noodle. Uh, please give us a call back. We'll be here until 5 p.m. Our number is 212-522-9222. One of the things that I, I'm always striving to do in the book is really try to make it, it's like it's so packed full of stories, so packed full of stuff that even after you close it, the characters are still kind of like walking around and doing stuff. Um, and so, so this was done for the art show. This was done about a couple years ago. And so it, it met some like it's some okay success, and, and again the following grew a little bit. But I still hadn't like I hadn't perfected it yet. And I had just I was in the middle of doing the second book, and so um, I was still kind of fumbling around with it, still trying to figure it out. And then I finished the second book, and then the second book wound up getting nominated for a Glyph Award. Um, if anybody are you, are there any comic book fans in the house today? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know, the Glyph 
comic awards are like the uh, black comic awards. Okay, so um, it's supposed to highlight like the best and brightest in, in black literature. Write that down, please. Um, and so uh, I submitted the book after I finished uh, the second book, Take the A Train. Um, I submitted it for uh, consideration, and then I got uh, word that it got nominated for a uh, Rising Star category. And um, so, slowly but surely, things started to kind of pick up for it, and then uh, I wound up going to San Diego and speaking on the Hip Hop and Comics panel. And so, um, another thing I can tell you guys about the book is I'm referencing a lot of different things. Um, as you can tell from the title, Chick the A-Train, that's an Ellington thing. Um, but uh, what I try to do is I, I, I go in and I, I like try to find um, musicians and just like prominent figures out of like pop culture or uh, uh, history and then I try to incorporate them into the book. And so like if you look, if you look at some of the character designs you'll see some like Prince in there and some Michael Jackson and like uh, I try to kind of like take from all these kind of different sources. I really try to figure out um, how it would look and, and try to like really kind of create some new interesting characters. I think at, like at one point I was designing a character and one of the formulas I had was like, it was like Bruce Lee divided by Bob Marley. You know, it was like what, what happens when you put those two things together? You know? And so that's kind of like the mashup that I'm, I'm always kind of constantly trying to do. Um, and so things kind of took off for the book. But again, I was still kind of frustrated with the way things were going. Um, and then finally, I just decided to say screw it, and I decided to animate it. And so I went back into the, the first book, and I repurposed all the artwork, and I made a little string out and animated and everything. Um, and so now it's, it's just about finished. Um, so I don't have it here with me today, but what I do have is a trailer for it. I think we just have a misunderstanding. So, do you guys, I mean, I'll open it up for questions, I guess. Is there anything you guys want to ask me or anything you guys want to know? Uh, when is the screening? Screening is going to be the second week of October. Um, any other questions? Uh, I actually, I met an old friend of mine. That was my nickname, Wally Fresh. My, my middle name is Wallace. And so uh, a friend of mine, she used to call me Wally Fresh all the time. Like, and then she's like, no, you can't. Turn us to my name. <laughs> Turn us to like, you gotta be, you gotta be Wally Fresh. Uh, that was kind of like the, the, the idea behind it. Any other questions? Yeah. So, so far it's just adding for the first book? Yeah, yeah. So what you saw right now is a trailer for the uh, first issue, basically. And so that's what we'll be screening. <clears throat> Come on, we got some questions. I, I don't really have a question. It's a comment. I liked it, and I thought it was good. Like, uh, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, what did you guys think? Did it, did it hit for you guys? Or what, it's different. It's unique. Yeah. That's something you have to like. 
I noticed why you have to really listen to what they're saying because I have to remember that they're leaving two different, like, you know, they're leaving voicemail for two different people. Yeah. That's yeah. what I had to remember, like, okay, like, so this guy, Wally, it seems like he has, like, um, like females are probably obsessed with him, like, yeah, he can yeah. be, like, he has, he's good, with, he's a ladies man. Then it also seems like, um, there was something else, I think. Um, I mean, yeah, like, what I try to do is, uh, I mean, I try to incorporate a lot of different elements. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, you know, like, Indiana Jones, you guys, you guys know Indiana Jones, right? So I was like, I mean, to me, I was like, yeah, dude, why not have Indiana Jones dressed as someone he does rock and hip hop? Like, you never see, you never seen that before. Um, but I, and I, I really wanted to kind of strive and, and kind of break that, because, I mean, in comic books, um, one of the things you see is, I mean, one, when you have people of color in comic books, they're not really spotlit in a way that kind of celebrates the culture, you know? And so that was one of the things that I wanted to try and do, um, was highlight the, the beauty of black culture and the beauty of hip-hop culture. Uh, which, I mean, you kind of like, it's like when you see stuff, I think, like, to me personally, I think, you know, Boondocks has a pretty solid handle on it. I think, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, black Dynamite, that's another one that kind of gets it, you know? In terms of kind of like lampooning and, and, and showing you guys like something that's interesting. Are you have you guys seen Black Dynamite? Yeah. No. You haven't seen it. No. I, I encourage you if you have Netflix, check it out. <laughs> Black Dynamite. It's uh, Michael Jai White is an actor, producer, director. Um, there was a movie that came out called Black Dynamite. It was kind of like a a take on the old seventies black exploitation films yeah. and from that came the, the, the comic. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so like that's the thing, like for me I like I wanted to try and incorporate elements of fantasy, science fiction and, and um, like create a character that was just kind of an interesting person, you know. That kind of that, that makes the, the characters that are really lovely, you know. Um, and so I mean that's what that's what I tried to do. So uh, I mean can I open it up? For any more questions? Or? Good job. Thanks. <laughs> you have a question over here? Yeah, do you incorporate any personal stories and then just change your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, like, one of the things I did for the second graphic novel, I try to, like, what I try to do is I'll take um, kind of like urban myths about New York that I experienced while I was there and then find a story to move around. So for the second book, which is the book you guys all have a sample of, I'll tell you guys the premise for the story. The premise is, I mean, like for the East Coast people that are out here, you guys know East Coast winters are rough, okay? Like East Coast winters are some of the roughest winters. Like we, get, we get off so easy in California. Um, but Midwest, East Coast winters are terrible. And so there's this thing in New York uh, where, you know, if you're, like during springtime, you know, it's like after the winter and it's been so terrible outside. Springtime hits and it gets really, really nice so you go outside, right? And so everybody's just out. You know, and so like that's kind of like that's that's like spring season is kind of like the hookup season, you know. <laughs> and so you know like and especially in New York when the weather is so terrible, you're like, oh, it's just so good to be outside. So you find somebody, and then you kind of like hook up for the summer, right? And so like if you can make it to like September, October, you'll most likely wind up with that person for the rest of the winter because you just don't want to do a New York winter by yourself. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> make, make sure they got good hygiene, whoever it is. <laughs> so in this storyline, um, it opens with Wally has caught up with this girl who he's like in the middle of a spring fling with, right? And so we're crawling into like September, October. And so it's the last day of summer. And Wally knows that if he can just make it through the night without the girl breaking up with him, he'll have a relationship that will last him until next spring. And he's like, you know, she can tell me in the spring. I don't care if she comes in the spring. I just don't want to spend the winter by myself. <laughs> and so, uh, so he goes out on a date, and sure enough, the girl wants to break up with him. And so she wants to break up with him because he's like a boring guy. He doesn't do anything interesting. And meanwhile, trains in the New York subway are disappearing. And Barry, his, his roommate, and his neighbor Valerie are going to go into the subway tunnels and figure out what's stealing the trains. And so they bump into Wally and the date 
And they're like, yeah, you should come along. Like, we're going to go see this monster that's fucking stealing trains. And um, so Wally doesn't want to go because he's like, no, every time I hang out with you guys, you guys give me in trouble. Like, the last time I hung out with you, I almost wound up, you know, at the hands of a serial killer. So he's like, no, I don't want to go. But the girl who he's on the date with is like, oh, this is a perfect chance to be interesting, fun, it's an adventure, and this just might save our relationship. So that's kind of the premise for it, and then they're off. And then, you know, through the course of whatever happens. But, um, that, uh, like, so, I mean, back, what I, what I mean to bring it back is it's like, that kind of like New York story is like what I kind of try to do with it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else like that. Um, <laughs> hmm? <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah. Well, it, try, it tries to be. I mean, I just try, like, it, I try to kind of, it's, it's, it's like slice of life stuff, but with a kind of like fantastical spin on it. So he's like, he's kind of, he's like, try, kind, try, like having to handle his relationship problems at the same time as he's like trying to save the world, basically. Which, I mean, when you're in the middle of like trying to save the relationship, it can kind of seem like you're trying to save the world. So, um, but uh, let's see if there's anything else I can tell you. Uh, I mean, really just like, you guys have the material now, so I encourage you guys to check it out if you guys are looking for something new to get into, if you guys want to see some cool characters. So for those of you who will be needing some extra credit, I highly advise you, this is an opportunity right here. And for those of you who want to see some amazing hip hop and comics and how these two worlds are coming together as we're talking about the politics of hip hop culture moving forward. I mean, this is this is great stuff, folks. So, any other questions? Let's give a round of applause to our. Uh, so Wally, I was being a big fan of hip hop, right? Yeah. Um, and what other ways do you incorporate hip hop culture into the? Oh, I try to do it with like fashion, character design. Um, the way, I mean, you know, the speech and the language, you know, there's like a, I mean, I put a little bit in, there's like a little bit uh, in the book where, you know, they go to the, the media, it's like after the trains start disappearing, they go to the streets, the news, the news goes to the streets to, to try and get the take on the, what, like what Brooklyn thinks about it. You know, like one of the cats they talk to winds up trying to kick a freestyle. You know? <laughs> it's like that kind of thing, so, um, yeah, I hope that, Cool. Well, thank you guys for letting me come and speak with you.